Thank you, John and Helen. So, the dreaded coronavirus seems to have morphed itself and become faster and more lethal. According to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, website, Africa has about 2.8 million confirmed cases and approximately 67,000 deaths since the pandemic started. Nigeria having about 16,000 active COVID cases and 1,300 confirmed COVID deaths. Within my circle of influence alone, I've heard of about five COVID deaths in the last one week. I know I'm spotlighting already dreary picture, but the truth is we need to keep talking about COVID because we need to choose life, love and good health. Here with me to shed some light is Dr. Ekong, a frontline worker at Ama Shield Medical Center, which is an approved COVID isolation center and part of the Reddington Hospital Group. Welcome, Dr. Ekong. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. First, I must say thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule. Thank you for saving lives in this really, really difficult time. Um, we are really, really quite grateful to have people like you working tirelessly to save as many lives as possible. So thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Awesome. So, Dr. Ekong, <laughs> we're talking COVID. Yes. The reality that is COVID. True. It's dreary, but we have to talk about it, you know. And one of the things I wanted to ask you first and foremost is, is COVID real? You know, that sounds like a really silly question, but a lot of the times when we talk to friends and family and our staff and other people around us about COVID, they tell us COVID is not in Nigeria. COVID is a rich man's disease, it's a white man's disease. We don't get COVID for here, Jerry. You know, all these things. So the question is, is COVID real? Yes, COVID is very real. Tell, tell us some more. COVID is as real as what we see on the news and TV. COVID is what we see everywhere. Our numbers might not be as um, right as the same, probably maybe because we are not testing as much as we should, but COVID is real. Half or more than half of our patients might be asymptomatic mm. or mildly symptomatic. Mm. But the truth about it is people are dying from COVID and COVID is real. And whether we like it or not, we just have to keep passing on this message to the entire population that COVID is real and people need to get to understand that it's real. Okay. So when you say people need to understand that is real and we need to keep passing on the information one of the things that concerns me the most is how we pass on that information especially to our domestic help which a lot of us have or you know in a lot of, in the average nigerian household you either have one to even four or five domestic help you have um a cousin or relative from the village who is not necessarily as educated as you and we have to communicate COVID to them. How do we do this? I think the first thing is before you pass on information to someone you need to understand what that is and if you have a good understanding you'll be able to pass on that information seamlessly and be able to you know um, educate them so much so well that they can you know understand the burden and the pain. Um, I know a couple of times people say, oh, coronavirus, are we really passing the right information to them? Are we telling them the reality on ground? Majority of us or majority of the people that have had COVID would be asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic. But we also need to tell them that if they become COVID positive or they have the coronavirus and they are not protective of the you know the very fragile population those that are those that have comorbidities are elderly patients uh, then would start, would, would put everyone at risk or would put those people with those comorbidities and our elderly uh, population at risk of um, of of probably you know coming down with the critical form 
and then probably dying as well. So we really need to educate them. And passing on this information, we need to you know, explain to them in ways that they would understand. If it means us you know, communicating to them in languages that they would understand and breaking it down, not just telling them COVID, but explaining to them exactly what COVID is. Okay, so there were some key things that you said now that I understand. Okay. My staff may not understand. When you say when the person is COVID positive. First, actually, COVID-19 and coronavirus, they're the same thing, right? True. Okay. Same. Because again, it goes back to communication. True. For some people, they hear coronavirus. Some people hear COVID-19 and they, they're not quite sure whether it's the same thing. So it's good to know that it is exactly the same thing. So when you say when they become positive, how do you know you're positive? Okay. Thank you very much for that question. Um, we need to pay attention to these symptoms and we need to be true to ourselves. If you're sick, we need to communicate. I have a headache, I have a fever. You get tested for malaria and it's negative. Let's test for COVID-19. Okay, I'm a domestic help. My salary is not that good. I have dependencies. Who am I going to tell? I don't feel I can tell my boss. Who am I going to tell that I need to get tested? You know, these are real practical challenges that we face every day. How do I tell that person who is earning minimum wage, or in some instances below minimum wage, that you can talk to somebody, you can get tested, you can get help, how, how do I do that? Thank you for that question. I think, you know, getting the right information is key, like I said earlier on. There are a lot of centers out there that still do free testing. And if we go through the right pro processes, the majority of people would get tested for free. And the problem, the challenge there is, we don't have this information. Naima does test for free. Who is Naima? NIMA is the National Institute of Management and Research, Medical Research. So, like you said, we don't have the information. Yes. You know, so one of the biggest challenges to actually addressing this pandemic is lack of information. True. And then the manner in which that information is broken down. You know, and <laughs> it's, it's not something we can actually unpack today because it is... It is really, really difficult, you know. So, so would you say that the thing that we have control over would be how we break down this information to the community around us, to our staff? You know, you were talking earlier um, before we came on air about breaking it down in a manner in which they understand. True. So my assumption is... If it's Pidgin English, they understand. Break it down in Pidgin English. Sure. It's not enough to just say, wash your hands. COVID is real. How, how, how would we break it down? You know? We should break it down in every language. Mm. So if we're in the West and Yoruba is the lingua franca, let's speak Yoruba to them. Let's find people that can really speak, you know, that are really very fluent in Yoruba language to communicate to those people, not just tell them. COVID-19, wear marks, no. Let's communicate to them in the language at which they can understand. So let's speak Yoruba, let's speak Pidgin to them. You know, let's get down to our native languages and let's mm -hmm. pass this information to them as much as they need to. We don't have to just say it once and sit and, you know, or get back to our comfort zone and say, yes, we've passed that information, no. Mm -hmm. It should be every day. On a regular basis. On a regular basis. Okay, thank you so much for that. So, this then takes me to Agbo. Home remedies. Do these home remedies work? Well, home remedies, tradomethin, these are really not evidence based. Mm. Um, occasionally, they might work. But because we don't know the dangers, 
the complications that they can cause. Mm. Um, it's best to actually stay out of them. Mm. That's the truth. Mm. So you don't want to take your Agbo or your Trado medication, or your traditional herbs, and you probably had or probably would have some sub to or give you some sub to relieve. Mm. But then the damages that would set in two, three months or four months or immediately, you know, are those issues that we have to put into consideration. Mm. So mm. for me, I would tell you outrightly that I don't subscribe to the use of Agbo or traditional medications. Okay. Thank you so much for that. So one very simple question. Masks. We have a myriad of masks out there. We have non-surgical masks and we have surgical masks. Which is better? I think the most important thing is understanding why we need to use our masks. Okay. And then why we use these masks. Mm. The max is protective mm -hmm. for both you and for both me, mm. for both the wearer and the next person. Mm. And how you use the max is very key. So we have our cloth marks. Mm -hmm. Most important thing is, do we remember to wash them? Mm. Mm. Which is key. Mm. You know, mm. People shouldn't forget those basics. Mm. So you're out there with your marks, you're back at home, let's remember to wash and sun them. Mm. Mm. And also how you wear it, like you said. Because I've seen a lot of people, when they wear their mask, they don't cover their nose, they just cover their mouth. True. Yeah. You know, the, the, the purpose of the mask is to cover your nose and your mouth. Why? To prevent those droplets. How? Those respiratory droplets. How? So when you put on the mask and, um, you know, you're talking to someone and the person is standing close to you, those droplets would, you know, get onto the mask. But that's when you're talking. What of your nose? The same thing. How do so you we droplets occasion come out of your nose? Occasionally we have droplets from our nose as well, our nostrils. Okay. And also, when you inhale mm. and someone is talking. Mm. So, so that's where they say it's a two-way thing. You know, it's not just for the wearer, but for the person who they're communicating with. Of course. Because you're either exhaling through your mouth or you're inhaling through your nose. So it doesn't really matter what type of mask you wear, no, but you must wear matter. masks. Yes, we all must put on a mask. Excellent. So before, we, before we, we end the session, I would like you to tell us three things that we can take away with us that would actually make a difference to how we deliver the message of the reality of COVID. You're on the front line. You know, you've seen the worst case scenarios every day. So what are the three key things that you would like to tell us? Okay, the, key, the three key things I would like to say is the first, reiterate the fact that COVID is real and we all have to accept it and we all have to be vigilant as well. Two, we all have to ensure that we observe those necessary protocols, put on our face masks, wash our hands, use our hand sanitizers, stay away from social gatherings as much as we can maintain our social distancing. We can't overemphasize that. And three, if we find that anyone that has symptoms that are pertaining or that looks like COVID, we should help and assist them to get tested. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, COVID is such a huge topic that we can't unpack enough. Um, but what I would say to, to our viewers is go to the NCDC website. It's actually quite robust and it has all the, all the necessary information out there. Do your research. And like Dr. Ekong said, when you're communicating, break it down. You know, don't assume that the person you're communicating understands exactly what you're saying. And together, we will get through this. Now, there is irrefutable evidence of the benefits and the role of physical exercise in disease prevention. As an advocate for exercise, 
it is always important that we maintain a healthy fitness lifestyle. And with this, we're going to go into the fitness segment. Today with us is Dolly Phillips to show us some simple exercises that we can do at home. Thank you.